Real peace and contentment in our lives comes from realizing that life is a process to engage in, a journey down a path that we can choose to experience as magical. Yes, the practical mind is about how learning to live in the present moment and becoming process-oriented centers us on this magical path and brings us a wonderful sense of patience with both ourselves and our lives as we learn to enjoy our journey. Qualities as self-respect, self-discipline, focus, patience and self-awareness and we can recognize that these all important virtues are interwoven threads in the fabric of true inner peace and contentment in life. Yes, it is true. Today, we will learn how to make our minds so focused and change our minds into practicing minds. Be clear. Everything in life worth achieving requires practice, right? In fact, life itself is nothing more than one long practice session, an endless effort to refine our lifetime motions. When the proper mechanic of practice are understood, the task of learning something new becomes a stress-free experience of joy and calmness. Yes, a process that settles all areas in your life and promotes proper perspective on all of life's difficulties and struggles too. Yes, it is true. Practice with no stress. Think about how everything we learn and master in life, from walking and tying our shoes to saving money and raising a child is accomplished through a form of practice, right? Something we repeat over and over again. For the most part, we are not aware of the process as such, but this is how good practice manifests itself when done properly. It carries no stress, anticipation, no internal questions. When will the goal be reached? When we practice anything properly? The fact that we are engaging in a difficult learning process disappears and more important, the process dissolves into a period of inner calming that gives us a rest from the tension and anxiety that our get it done as today. World pushes on us every day of our lives, right? For this reason, it is important to recognize and be in control of the process and to learn to enjoy the part of life's activities. It's how we look at things. Most of the anxiety we experience in life comes from our feeling that there is an end point of perfection in everything that we are involved with ourselves, right? Whatever or wherever that perfection may be, we are not. We continuously examine consciously or unconsciously everything in our lives compare it to what we feel is ideal and then judge where we are in relation to that ideal. Having a bigger home, earning more income and buying a certain things and big car are normal parts of this routine. Don't deviate from the present. For example, in TV advertisements, this illusion is presented even more strongly. Buy this and your life will be great or worse death. Without this, your life is incomplete. It's not as important as becoming aware of how they distort our perspective of where we are on the road of happiness. If these kind of images are used for inspiration, they can be very beneficial. But if they are used as a measuring device, they can become our downfall too. 
For example, you could go out to a concert one evening and hear the performance of a world-class piano soloist. The next day, so moved by the performance the night before, you could decide to take up the piano. If you buy a CD of the soloist playing the performance you heard the previous night and use it to motivate yourself to practice, it could be a very good thing. If however you began to analyze your progress based on how you play in relation to the soloist's performance like something that is usually done unconsciously, you are headed for discontentment only. Yes. You may even become so frustrated that you give up on your efforts. So don't deviate from the present which is out of the circumstances. Make sure that we always do our best thoughts to practice only good things. Don't compare in doing something. Do you think a flower seed sits in the ground and say, this is going to take forever. I have to push all this dirt out of my way just to get to the surface and see the sun. Every time it rains or somebody waters me, I'm soaking wet and surrounded by mud. When do I get to bloom? That's when I will be happy. That's when everybody will be impressed with me. I hope I'm an orchard and not some wildflower nobody notices. Orchards have it all. No, wait, I want to be an oak tree. They are bigger than anybody else in the forest and live long too. As silly as the flower's monologue might sound right, it is exactly what we do and we do it as they say, every day and in every way. We consciously or unconsciously pick a point of reference in whatever we do and decide that nothing will be right until we get to that point. If you step back and observe your internal dialogue from time to time during the day, you will be amazed at how hard you work against yourself with this type of thinking. Yes, it is true. However, as you become better at present-minded thinking, you will realize its value when you are approaching emotionally, slowing your activities and negating their power over you. The practicing mind puts you in the control of even the most difficult situations and allows you to work with less effort and negative emotion at any activity. Yes, it is true. This produces inner peace and you accomplish more with less effort. 3 S's for Best Practicing As you develop control of your practicing mind, it is important to work in a fashion that makes staying in the process as easy as possible. And these three techniques, each one basic and straightforward on its own, own can help you to do just that. Simplify When you work on a specific project or activity, simplify it by breaking it down into its component sections. Don't set goals that are too far beyond your reach. Unrealistic goals create frustration and invite failure only which can make you doubt your abilities also. So don't make unrealistic goals. Short Now you can also bring short into the equation. I'm going to work at cleaning the garage for 45 minutes a day over the next few days until it is completely clean. You can survive just about anything for 45 minutes. You have to deal with only one corner of the garage for 45 minutes and you will be done for the day. You look at your watch and walk away from the task at the end of the 45 minutes, feeling in control and satisfied that your goal of the clean garage is flowing towards you. No frustration is involved. You have simplified the task 
by breaking it down into small segments and asking yourself to focus for only a short period of time. You are practicing the art of perfect Gary's cleaning. Yes, it is true. Slow. At a pace slow enough to allow you to observe your actions in detail. This will differ from, say, the slow pace at which you learn a new computer program. If you are aware of what you are doing, then you are probably working at the appropriate phase. The paradox of slowness is that you will find you are accomplish the task more quickly and with less effort because you are not wasting energy. So try it and you will see the result better than ever. Thank you.